Greetings accounting students. First of all, let's acknowledge the source. I'm working from the sixth edition of the Unit 1-2 VCE Accounting Textbook from Macmillan. We're working from exercise 15.4 where I'm going to record the opening balances and then the debit and credit effects for this list of transactions. Okay. Just scroll up here. Now, just to add a bit of clarity to this video, if we look at the opening balances here, I've just made a mini balance sheet on the side here. So we've just listed all our assets, bank accounts, receivable inventory. I've put them on the asset side. Then we've got a couple of liabilities. And what's missing here is the capital figure because uh, it won't balance. So total up the assets equals 76,400. So therefore, given A equals L plus OE, equities are equal the same. So to work out my capital balance, we simply just go equities figure minus our total liabilities, and then we get our capital figure of 61,900. All right, so let's take those four assets, two liabilities, and that one capital figure, and let's record the opening balances. All right, so first balance is our cash at bank, 3,200. So my system here is I've just kind of blanked this out. Accounts receivable, opening balance of 9,200. We have some inventory. So again, all the assets, as we've got here, they go on the debit side of the balance sheet. So that's where the opening balances go. Inventory. 4,800. We've got some office furniture for 6K. All right, then we've got some accounts payable for 12,000. So liabilities and capital, they are on the credit side of the balance sheet. So that's the side we record the opening balances on. Okay, so GST clearing, if we look at that balance sheet, 2,500 is owed to the ATO, so that is another uh, credit opening balance. And then, as I said before, we worked out our capital. So if we go down here, our capital opening balance is 61.9. Now we're ready to start recording our transaction. So on the first, we bought some inventory on credit for 5k, there's plus is a GST effect. Now, keyword here is credit. So our inventory account has gone up. So when we have an increase in an asset, that's a debit entry. So let's find our inventory account and we're going to top that up by 5k. Now our cross-reference, is accounts payable because we've bought it from a supplier on credit. So therefore, if we go to our accounts payable, not only are we being charged 5,000 for the inventory, but there's also a GST effect of 500, which needs to be factored in. So therefore our entry, our cross reference is inventory slash GST clearing. So in terms of our GST clearing account, when we uh, collect GST from a cash customer or when we charge it for a credit customer, that increases our GST liability, but we get the opposite when we're charged GST on a purchase. So if we look at our rules of double entry, when we get a decrease in our GST liability, that is a debit entry. So therefore, we're going to do a debit entry cross-referenced with accounts payable. So those two debits equal our one credit in dollars terms. Then on the second, we've received 2,200 from accounts receivable. So that money, cash, is going into our bank balance. We're topping it up. An increase in an asset is a debit entry. So we need to debit our bank account our accounts receivable is actually going down. An accounts receivable is an asset, but because the customer is literally reducing their debt, we've got an asset going down. 
and so therefore that's a credit. So what essentially we're doing is we're swapping one asset for another. Okay, then we get to the third. Now this one's a bit complicated because we've got a cash um, sale here at the sale price effect, but we've also got some cost of sales, which I'll park for now. So in terms of the sale price effect, our bank balance is going up by the combined revenue plus the GST, 3300 And when we have an increase in our asset bank, we do a debit entry. So go to your bank balance, go to your bank ledger, I should say, and we're going to cross-reference that with cash sales for the three grand revenue and plus 300 GST. So then we go down to our revenue account. Well, let's go to our GST first. So we're collecting GST and we're going to mine that until we do our BAS statement and then we're going to forward it to the ATO. So we're actually increasing our GST balance on this one by 300. Then we go down to our cash sales account and this is revenue going up. Revenue going up increases profit, which increases our equity. So therefore our owner's equity. So an increase in revenue is a credit entry for that 3000 amount. We're not done because there's a cost of sale effect. So therefore we need to factor this in so that our inventory balance is accurate. And also so we can generate an accurate gross profit calculation when we do our income statement. So our inventory account is actually going down. We've passed on some inventory to our customer. So when we get a decrease in our asset, that's a credit entry. So back to our inventory account, we're going to credit it by the cost price effect, 1400. And the debit of the corresponding debit of that, we create a cost of sales account, which is an expense. An increase in expenses is a debit entry. And the reason why we need to manage this is because the sale price effect, 3000, then we need to subtract our cost of sales effect 1400 and that will enable us to work out the gross profit on that transaction of 1600 which will be relevant to our income statement on the fourth we've withdrawn some inventory for 2000 so our inventory asset is going down uh, asset decreasing is a credit entry for 2000 and because of the entity assumption we need to record that as drawings when owner's equity goes down we actually do a debit entry so uh, drawings is negative owner's equity so debit to drawings okay then we get to the fifth now whenever we pay anything that's going to reduce our bank balance and a reduction in an asset is a credit entry. So therefore, we're going to credit our bank for that 4K. Then our other account affected by that is our accounts payable and accounts payable is a liability and we're actually reducing our liability. So therefore, because we're paying them off, so therefore, we're going to do a debit entry. Then we get to another sale, except this is a credit sale on the 6th. So therefore, don't touch the bank. No money is changing hands. So let's start with the revenue effect. We've got a credit sale, and when revenue increases, that increases our profit, which increases our owner's equity. That's a credit entry. So in terms of our cross-reference, that's going to impact our accounts receivable. In terms of the GST effect, because we're charging our credit customer $300, eventually we're gonna collect that and then we'll owe that to the ATO. So that's li a liability to the ATO that's going up. And when we increase our liability, that is a credit. So our cross-reference 
is the other account affected, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset because it's a future economic benefit when we receive that 3300 and when we increase an asset that is a debit entry for the combined amount. So 6600 I should say. So therefore we need to record the combined effect of that. All right, again, another payment this time on the 7th to wages. So asset bank is going down and when we decrease an asset, that's a credit entry. And then we have an expense, our wages account. So when we have an increase in an expense, that's a debit entry. So therefore, cross-reference with bank. Okay, I think we're nearly halfway here. On the 8th, McGill's the owner. They've contributed cash into the business. So we're actually topping up our bank balance with a capital injection. Again, because of the entity assumption, we've got to record that as capital. So an increase in your bank balance means a debit entry, cross-reference with capital. That's where the cash has come from. And then we need to go downstairs and find our capital account. And when your owner's equity is increasing, we do a credit to that OE account for five grand. Okay, we're up to the ninth. Similar to the transaction on the eighth, we've borrowed some cash from the bank. So we're actually putting this money in the bank. So that's increasing our uh, bank balance, which is an asset going up, which is a debit. And we've created some more liability here for, um, for the loan. So therefore that money has created an external claim on the assets of the business. And when we increase our liability, that is a credit entry. So let's just find our loan account and we'll record that as a credit entry. Now we're up to the 10th. And we've got two transactions on the 10th. First of all, we've got a cash sale. This is exactly the same as the uh, transaction we had on the 3rd, except we've got a different number. Oh, no, we don't. We've got the same number. So our bank balance is going up by the combined amount, as we had on the 3rd. We've got a GST effect of the liability going up, another 300. We've got some more revenue in our cash sales account. There's a cost price effect. So our cost of sales is increasing. Whoops, I missed one there on the six of that credit sale. Apologies. Then in our inventory, I missed the, oh, we've got two that I need to manage. So we had that credit sale on the 6th for 2,900 and then another 1,600. So my apologies on the 6th, there was a cost price effect for 2,900. And then we've also had that cost price effect for that cash sale on the 10th. Then we had some cleaning on the 10th as well for $110. So it says payment here. So that's coming out of the bank combined amount for the GST. So we've actually forked out $110 for that cleaning. So if we go to our expense account for cleaning, that's increasing by 100. An increase in an expense is a debit because it reduces our profit and our owner's equity. And we also get a GST offset. So because we've paid GST, just like we did with that accounts payable on the 1st, we're actually reducing our GST liability by $10. On the 11th, we've purchased some inventory. That's the same as a payment. So our bank balance is decreasing. Bank asset going down means we do a credit entry. We've got more inventory. So inventory is an asset going up. And again, as we did with that transaction on the 10th, we're going to get a GST reduction in our liability, a GST offset for that um, GST effect on that inventory purchase. 
All right, got a couple left, three left. Paid web website expenses. So again, bank balance is going down by the combined total of both the expense and the GST. So in terms of the GST effect, another debit entry because your liability is going down when we pay. And then we also have the expense increasing because of the reduction in OE. Two left. On the 13th, we've bought a vehicle for 19K. So that's another payment. So therefore, our bank balance is going down by 19K. And we've got more vehicle. So therefore, our vehicle account, when we have more asset, that is a debit entry. One to go. Two actually, because there's a wages there. So we've got a credit sale for 5K. So that's revenue increasing. So when revenue increases, we credit, just like we did on the 14th. There's a GST effect. So we're charging our credit customers for the GST. So therefore, when we collect it, we're going to forward that onto the ATO. So there's more liability there. In terms of the debit effect, we are going to do a debit entry to accounts receivable for the combined amount of both the revenue and the GST. This time I won't make the same mistake. We've got a cost price effect of 2,600. So therefore that means we've got less inventory because we've given it up to our customer and we need to record the cost of sales as an expense going up, which will reduce our gross profit. Very sneakily there, it's also said paid wages for 500. Again, another payment will reduce our bank balance and therefore our debit entry is for our expense going up and we've, this is our second entry for wages. All right, so very quickly, let's just whip through working out our final balances. So I've done this to avoid typing. So we total up our debit side, we total up our credit side. The debit side's bigger than our credit side. So our final balance is 5535. Same with this one, we total up our debits, we subtract our credits and we end up with a balance of 19.1 um, as an asset. Inventory, again, total up your debits, subtract your credits to work out the final balance of your inventory. Office furniture, one entry, nice and easy. So in terms of accounts payable, we've got one debit entry there. We subtract that from our credit entries to work out our final balance. GST, an interesting one because we've got entries that are pretty close on both sides. Um, and in this case, our credits are larger than our debits. So our final balance is a GST liability. Cost of sales, nice and easy. We can just total that up for a balance of 8,500. Drawing's just the one entry. Cash sales, total it up for a 6K. Credit sales, total it up for 11K. Wages, total it up for 1,000. Capital, total it up for 66.9. Okay, so that's all of that done. Let's just uh, rip these out of the way. If you want to take a screenshot um, of the income statement. So what we've done is we've added up our two revenues. We've subtracted our cost of sales balance, which I've worked out from my ledger to work out our GP, 8,500. And then we've less, we've deducted our three expenses. So GP minus our expenses equals net profit. And then with our balance sheet, um, I've classified this. So uh, 
I didn't say about the loan in terms of the split, so I've just banged that all in the non-current liabilities. Don't forget to um, transfer your cap, uh, net profit to your owner's equity. Don't forget to um, have drawings as a negative figure. So all of these are just our ledger totals. So again, might be worth taking a screenshot if you haven't balanced.